10 cities. So minus 10. And finds the average amount of rainfall for 1995 was 7.42 inches. Such so X bar, that's the average rainfall, rain, rainfall of those 10 cities, 7.42 inches. This is 10 cities. Um, standard deviation of the sample, so that's S, is 1.3 inches. Um, alpha is 0.05, which means the, the tail area is going to be 0.05, or that if the null is true, there's a 5% chance that we're going to reject the null if it's true. So we're going to make a mistake, in other words, 5% chance we're going to make a mistake and reject it when it's actually true. Um, can it be concluded that for 1995 the mean rainfall was below 11.52 inches? Okay, for step A we're going to write our null and our alternative. Their question is, is can it be included that the rainfall, average amount of rainfall, which we're going to do mu for average rainfall, is below 11.52 inches? So below means less than. Since the less than doesn't have an equal with it, it goes in the second line. So the first line is going to be mu greater than or equal to 11.52 inches. Which one do you think is the claim? The top one or the second one? It's the second one. If they're saying, can it be colluded is below, they're kind of, they're questioning if it's below, they're kind of claiming it's below. It's kind of hard to, I know that's not, it's kind of vague, but whatever the question is, is what they're claiming. Okay, step B. Get the critical values. Is this a one or two tail test? One tailed yet because it's got a greater than or less than. It. Now it's got a, a less than, which means it points to the left. You look at the second line, the alternative hypothesis. Points left, we're looking at a left tail test. So my critical value is going to be right here. The dis difference is this time the critical value is going to be a Z instead of a T because my sample size is less than 30 and we don't know the standard deviation of the population. So you pull out your T chart, which should be on the back of your Z chart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think. I don't have one up here, but you should be able to look up alpha equal 0.05. Let me look at that chart real quick. Someone have one handy? Yeah. Okay, so go to the top, look up alpha equal 0 0.05, and look. notice there's a column for one tail. So look in one tail. Um, if n equals 10, degrees of freedom would be what? Nine. Nine, right. So you're going to go down your chart, degrees of freedom of 9, and you'll, over here you're going to be in the one-tailed row, and you're going to have alpha equal 0 0.05. And what's that number across from 9 and below 0 0.05? 1.833. 1.833. Okay. That's your critical value. T equal 1.833. Just for that, yep. Now, why, it's negative. Why is it negative? You're right. Yeah. Right. If it's to the left, remember, zero is in the middle of our z and t distribution. So if it's to the left, it's going to be a negative. You can't forget that. All right, step c is to calculate the test value. If the test value falls in this white area, that's the non rejected region. That means we will not reject the null. If the test value falls um, out in the critical region, the striped tail area, then we'll reject the null. Okay? So to get our critical value, T equals X bar minus mu over S divided by the square root of N. So X bar is our sample mean, which is 7.42, minus mu, which is 11.52. Um, so just looking at that, does that look like there's a pretty big difference there? <coughs> yeah. It looks like there's going to be a pretty big difference. So I'm guessing, just, I don't have the statistically figured out yet, but I'm guessing that this is going to get a pretty low t-score because it look, and it's probably going to end up with a value out here in the left tail. Let's, let's find out here in a minute, though. S is 1.3 divided by the square root of um, 10. Make sure you put parentheses around everything like that. Anyone tell me what that comes up to? Negative 9.97. Negative 9. what? 9.97. Wow, that means we're, it's kind of like being almost 10 standard deviations, or actually they're called standard errors of the mean, but similar to a standard deviation. 7.42 is almost 10 standard deviations to the left 
of 11.52, or 10 standard errors is the correct way to say it. So we're way out here in the left tail, way, way out here. Right? We know that 99.7% of the data falls within <coughs> three standard deviations. This is way out here. Almost 10 standard deviations to the left. So statistically, 7.42 is nowhere close to 11.52. So we're going to reject the null. Because the null says the mean could equal 11.52. That's, that's not what our test value shows. So for part D, we're going to reject the null. Our claim is not in the null, though. Our claim's down here. So if rejecting this top line, rejecting the null, would we be supporting the second line or not supporting it? Supporting, supporting it, right. So if we're rejecting the null, that means there's enough evidence to support the claim. And then I want you to say what the claim is. The claim that the average rainfall is less than 11.52 inches. Or is below, excuse me, below 11.52 inches. Now, did we prove that, that, that it's below 11.52 or not? Did we prove it? What do we say yesterday? Can we, are we really proving anything here? No. no. We're just saying, does the evidence support or not support? We're not really proving anything. Which is why a lot of times when you look at research, you'll see a lot of studies. And once you see several studies in a row supporting one particular um, stance, then you can kind of start believing that evidence. But a lot of times you want to look at more than one study. That's good enough, Lucas. Any questions?